so here we are. It was a windy one today. Lovely run on the way out. On the way back, it was more like trying to practice what's it called? Scrum machine for rugby. It was crazy with this thing. These two. Oh, it's only 60 quid that was. I had to pick it up from London about a year ago now, but definitely worth its weight in gold now. So anyway, um, yeah, just tuning in for our 12.45 a.m. slash 1 p.m. Uh, running Q&A chat talk. Um, especially as it seems to be, I don't know, it depends where you read, doesn't it? Whether we're going to get total lockdown or not. Around here where I am, in this part of the world, everyone's being very sensible. Uh, people are giving two metres. Uh, everybody, cyclists, walkers, runners, people with dogs, all being very, very sensible. You know what? It's really, um, it's really nice. I'm trying to think of a nice word for nice, a better word for nice. It's just really satisfying the way people are nodding each other, smiling uh, to each other, just as recognition of, you know, what we're still humans. Uh, that's what I kind of like about it, and what will make me sad if uh, they do make this rule where no one can go out. I think that's, that'd be such a shame. We will start becoming less human, that's not cool. But it depends, doesn't it? Um, I saw this picture the other day. I'm just going to rattle on until people ask me any running questions. So if you have come along for a running Q&A, then, then do feel free to ask a question and I shall answer as best I can. But did anyone else see that? I'm not sure if it's true or fake. Maybe someone can say for sure if they know. Maybe no one knows. There was this kind of video footage taken by somebody at Richmond Bridge or something yesterday or the day before with a load of people kind of hanging out and sunbathing there was a busker playing music um, I just wondered whether it was true or not I, I like to think in my heart it wasn't true and the way it was kind of released by uh, I think it was released by S Surrey police who was no Surrey Road Police who were saying that they couldn't intervene because Richmond doesn't fall into their jurisdiction but um, it was just a picture of like just everyone enjoying themselves as if nothing was going on but a lot of people in the video were saying that it was two weeks ago um, I don't know my bias of thinking the best in people is that it was taken two weeks ago but I hate to think that Surrey Road Police actually put that out there as a, as a tactic to tell people to stay at home knowing that it was two weeks old um, I don't know I wonder if everyone else saw it it frustrated me a little bit if it was true then geez I'm living in a bubble I imagine because here people are taking it very seriously um, I like to think it wasn't true I don't know but anyway so the idea of these little check-ins is I've just finished my little run for today well it wasn't a little run it was actually a mammoth run at the end getting my head down against the wind with these two five-year-old and a three-year-old no easy feet even now pushing the buggy back is a bit hard but hey great training for those of you who are already runners and want a bit of resistance work you might not have a hill near you but if you go out today with the wind against you there's your hill there's your strength work session so use today if you are around and it's windy if you're new to running and you are stepping out today and you find yourself in the wind but the little tip I always give people faced with the wind is you don't want to bend from the waist okay it's tempting because uh, the wind's in your face you kind of bend downwards but as soon as you bend down at the waist then you're putting the whole upper half of your body forwards over your feet it puts a lot more of your body weight onto your knees it makes your body work a lot harder and it kind of takes out that midsection which is kind of supposed to be there holding you up nice and flat and straight and supporting your upper body and top of the lower body so if you are out in the wind um, and, and you're trying to deal with it then the best thing to do is just just tip your neck down yeah keep your neck down and just turn to the side and keep yourself upright you only want to get your face out of the way you don't need to get your whole chest out of the way so still run tall and just dip your head down and uh, look to the side okay otherwise it will take its toll probably on you because you're kind of running bent over and that's never advised so there you go that's my tip if you're running into the wind and enjoy it geez i love the elements it makes you alive it's the planet we live in embrace the wind embrace the rain and all that i'm just maybe have to change your uh, technique a little bit anyway so who have we got in the house thanks for joining me people we've got courtney Connolly. hi courtney uh, kirstein herbert's watching hi thanks for joining 
Ian Barmer, Danny Clayton, great therapist there is watching. Hey Danny, hope you're doing well. Hope your business is surviving. I'm sure you're doing some form of online consultation, knowing you. And um, yeah, I recommend Danny 100%. Uh, Terry Vaughan, hey, good to see you, Terry. Thanks for your email the other day. Um, I will apply to that very shortly. If anybody has got any questions about uh, new to running or getting back into running, you're welcome to email me, matt at runchatlife.com. Um, I will reply, I promise you. Sarah Evans, hi. And Kirstine Herbert. Kirstine's got a question. Hi, Kirstine, again. Hi, Matt. How are you keeping your focus for training? Have you set weekly goals daily? Well, Kirstine, good question. I mean, for me, I'm actually coming back from an injury, some heel pain, which has been going on for a long time. Um, it's been going on since the Matt Fitzgerald podcast, which was, geez, I don't know, maybe in December's when it first raised its head or something. Or was it February? I've lost track of the time. No, it's not December, it was February. So I'm having to, I was had a very erratic training. I was trying, I was resting, I was doing strength training, I was resting, it wasn't working. Um, and then it started hurting a little bit in the other foot which kind of changed my diagnosis a little bit because I was worried about stress fractures although it didn't test positive for the various tests we do for that then I kind of figured it was I just noticed this weakness in both legs even the asymptomatic one so I figured it was a strength issue as it so often is but the strength work I was doing I tried using uh, the fasciitis fighter um, hey Mr Physio is a great therapist sent me one um, from Australia and I was playing around with that but it wasn't the time or the place then I just thought right I've got to find a level of running where I might be running on a 2 to 3 out of 10 pain but it's not causing huge amounts of pain afterwards or the day afterwards so basically for the last few weeks I've been trying to consistently run without either one during the run experiencing over 3 out of 10 pain or two in my case more importantly experiencing crazy pain um, within the 24 hours afterwards it was a bit of trial and error um, and there were days where I was standing up and hobbling and literally couldn't put any weight on my leg I was dragging my leg around my things are going crazy so but eventually I seem to have found now a way a tempo um, and a pair of trainers where I'm able to do 5k every day and touch wood I start off the run with about a 1 out of 10 which is probably going to stay there maybe forever but once I'm into the run it goes once I finish the run it's not there and within 24 hours then it's um, it's not going over there might be pangs at 1 or 2 but it's definitely better than it was better than when I was resting better than when I was doing my uh, weight training and stuff on it so for me the focus has been trying to get myself out of injury um, for other people I guess the focus has got to be the same thing. It's just having a plan. It's having a, every single run you go on has got to have an intention, really. Um, that might be just an easy one. Don't even think about my pacing. Just take in the beauty of the sea and the stones and the birds and the sky. That might be your goal for that particular run. The other one might be, right, this run, I've got to keep this tempo up. Mustn't go over, mustn't go under. The next one might be intervals. So I think the way to keep your focus for your training is just having a plan. It's the old thing, isn't it? Every time you go out, you've got to have a goal. But remember that goal could be, and one of them should be, relax. That should be one of your runs. It's an important rule of thumb. Is uh, again thinking of my guest Matt Fitzgerald in I can't remember what number podcast it was, but he's very well known for the 80-20 rule, where 80% of your week should be done at an easy pace, conversational pace, chilled out. It's only 20% where you should be really pushing it either up a hill or speed wise or whatever it is. So having a plan, Kirstine, as I'm sure you know. Um, and then ticking the plan off, feeling good about it. I quite like paper. You can keep things digitally on all these apps, but I think now and again, especially in these times, it's nice to open up a book and just have a little look through what you've actually done. Feel good about it. Look forward to ticking it off, underlining it, stuff like that. They're a little clues for focus. Um, I'll probably do one of my Saturday specials on uh, staying focused and planning for training programs and things like that. So I hope that helps your question anyway. <laughs> Uh, Paolo, how you doing? Paolo Mar Marighetto, how are you? Uh, Sharon, how you doing? Sharon from the Sports Therapy Association. Um, fantastic organisation. Obviously, I'm biased. I've been there for years now. And Sharon um, heads it up fantastically with Gary Benson. Um, if you are a therapist out there and you need any advice on the uh, legislation or if you need any assistance or help, then I would contact Sharon here or just uh, go to the Sports Therapy Association 
and they will look after you. They're a fantastic uh, association looking after therapists of all kinds, uh, not just sports therapists. They've got osteopaths, physios and all sorts of things on there. So there you go. Shout out to the Sports Therapy Association. Don't get it confused with any others which have a similar names. There's a lot of associations and things out there, but it's the STA, yeah, A for Apple or A for Association. There you go. Natalie Harmon, how are you doing? Thanks for joining us. Um, hope you are well. Mike James is in the house. Oh, I'm scrolling down. Afternoon legend, great topic. Mike James says, I've worked with many runners who swear running has saved them. It's become the new fix that's helped the place others. Although less dramatic for myself, it has remained... Uh, I've lost my... Oh, it's remained a constant compass point for me during times of stress to help me keep gain focus. Thanks in advance to anyone who's been brave enough to share their personal story. Stay safe, team. Yeah, cheers, Mike. That's amazing. It is true. I did say that today we'd be looking for anybody who's had some personal experiences. So you're welcome to mention those if you have already. Um, I know loads of stories. A lot of runners have come to me. Once you get to know someone, if you're a good therapist, I mean, the word... There are boundaries with therapy, and I've never liked the word therapist when it comes to looking after runners. But you know what? You do have to become a bit of a therapist because with our understanding of pain, you've got to have a chat with these people and see how they're going on with their personal lives. As we know, pain is amplified by feelings, memories, emotions, beliefs. Um, so to really help a runner, who, especially with persistent pain, you need to know what's going on in their lives. So often you do have some revelations. and um, So, yeah. You are kind of therapist as well. Makes it pretty tricky with the boundaries. That's why I always say that a good therapist will eventually find themselves working pretty closely with some kind of a mental support um, organisation in the area in case you feel that person does need some help and some counselling. But anyway, good to see you, Mike. Hope you're well. Thanks for all the information you're putting out. Mike James, endurance physio, some incredible videos. Um, some uh, wonderful videos of uh, exercises for you at home. Um, I love the programs he uses to stick them all together. It's brilliant. So I would follow Mike. I think most of you know Mike already. But if you don't, just spread some love for Mike James, the endurance physio, also a guest a couple of times on the Manchester Life podcast and indeed a speaker in 2019. Mane Martin, thanks for joining us again. Alan Strock, Mark Dyer. Can't pronounce that name, but um, because it looks like it's in Arabic. But hey, uh, there's a way for you as well. Um, John Steiner's here. Kirsten Herbert. I like paper too. Old school. I know we're showing our age, but I think there's a lot of value in paper. It's just it feeds that other sense, doesn't it? That holding, touching, recognizing, valuing. When you pick something up, like a book, it just gives value to it, doesn't it? So. Mike James says, I still keep all my training recorded in notebooks, old school. Yes. And you know what? I've got books. <laughs> I've got books when I was 18 years old. Either martial arts, trainings, different wrist techniques and, and, and takedowns and things and combinations. And I've got weight training books of what I was lifting when I was 18. It's fun. It's great to dig them out. Um, and also, yeah, what I was running. Um, yeah, personal best and things back in the day. Hi, Eric. Hi, Matt Lambert. Um, and hi, Michael Haley. There you go. So, looks like no one's actually got any personal experiences for running to share. And I'm nearing my home. But um, like I say, thanks for joining us all. And the idea of this is to answer any questions you might have, particularly for new runners, people trying to get back into it, people lost their mojo. But also just a chance for chat. You know, I just like the idea there's people out there a bit bored. If they know that more or less 12.45 p.m. every day, there'll be a few people online to talk about a shared passion for running and outdoor activity, then hey, this is where we'll be. Um, there is the proper series which I'm doing which is on YouTube which is going out at 1 o'clock Saturday which will be guiding people getting back into running so the first of that series is out uh, that was talking about eliminating barriers getting out the door, not worrying about shoes, warm-ups things like that that is on YouTube at the moment so if you enjoy that and do have a look and subscribe but uh, unless there's any other questions then I think it's about time to get home I think my time is up on our day of exercise I do cross your fingers, people, and pray that the government doesn't decide to uh, to lock down. I don't like all these stories of people out in the sun, but is it that bad? Maybe it's area-specific. I'd love to know. Someone can add in the comments whether that Richmond Bridge thing was true or not. Uh, hi, Liz. How are you? Right? And then, uh, yeah, I'd love to know. I like to think people, most people are being sensible. You know what I mean? We wouldn't have got this far as a civilization if most people weren't sensible. Um, 
anyway there you go i'm going to say goodbye take care um if you have got anybody who um is uh in a bad way then obviously I send out prayers and, and best wishes for family and anyone you do know i think our prime minister's in a bit of a bad way in hospital so best wishes out to him and his family um yeah i'll be back tomorrow hopefully uh, 12 45 one o'clock ish after my run or slash walk so if you've got any other questions or any emails feel free to email me matt at vunchatlife.com uh, but that's it for now thanks for joining us and uh, see you tomorrow take care stay safe but stay active